we fingernail polished these snails so that next year we can come to see if we can find them again. And as you can see, they really, really love this plant. There's one right there, one right there, and also one in here. They really like this plant. So we're going to release them right in here. Okay, um, what is this area called? What do we call this area? A arroyo. An arroyo. And what is an arroyo? An arroyo is a place where the most part of the land and water comes. Okay, water rains. flows down it when it rains, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. And we kind of went back and forth on whether or not we should put nail polish on these guys. We read up, some people think it's bad, other people are like, it's totally fine. And so we just put a little spot on them because what it's gonna do is it's going to um, allow us to find them again next year. And that gives me as a parent a great excuse and a great way to get the kids out of the house and outside exploring because we are gonna be looking for the snails that they marked last year and see how many we can find. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna count how many we're putting out here. How many have you put out so far? I've put out two. Two. Can you talk to us a little bit as you're putting them out, um, how they survive uh, the desert conditions? How they survive the desert conditions is like they go to the lowest part of the land and so that the where water is so that they can live. How else? What other adaptations or tricks do they use to survive being in a desert? You can stay in the shell. Okay. Their shell keeps them from. The shell keeps them from getting too hot. Mm-hmm. And drying out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's in a so you kind of forgot to feed them for a little bit, um, and then what they do? Hibernate. They yeah, they went to sleep, right? It's a special kind of hibernation where they can um, go um, estivate. I think is the word. I'll need to check on that, but it's. They basically form a foam at the bottom of their shell, which is kind of what Callan's taken off now. And then they, um, it keeps them from desiccating or drying out. And then whenever the rains come back, they can essentially wake back up from their, um, from their sleep and they eat all that foam and then they go about and do their business and they eat plants. Where do we get these snails from? We got them from a neighbor who didn't want to step on them. Right, she had them in her garden, right? And they were eating her garden plants. She didn't want to step on them and she didn't really want to kill them. So we are putting them in a native space where they can live their lives, eat their greens, maybe get eaten, but at least they're not being killed by people, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so how many did we release one more time? 17. All right, it's day two. Yeah, I cannot recount them. I know, it's hard to recount. Um, do you want to tell them how many we've currently found? Oh, nice. So we're up to what number now? I believe 10. We're up to 10. We have found 10 of our 17. So we just found two more. So our count is up to 12 of 17. We're pretty proud of ourselves, to be quite honest. Um, and then we, we looked at the one that had moved the furthest, or the first was furthest one that we could find. And Callan, how many feet did that little guy move? Two. Two feet in 24 hours. Honestly, I'm kind of impressed. Are you impressed? That's a long ways for a snail. So good job, snail. All right, so now we are up another snail and this one is twice as long as the other furthest one that we found. So now we're up to 13 and now how many feet do we have, Callan? Four. Four feet of movement. This is kind of exciting. I really think you guys should do this because we are thoroughly entertained. <laughs> All right, we have one being frothy. Let's look at this guy. Is he one of our snails? I forgot. Um, I don't know, you'd have to tip him over. How many of the snails do we have that we painted? Five. Five of 18. And we're- 17? 17. 